Hello and welcome to Inside Right, episode 11. And here we are, John Beach, in the UK. We are in Liverpool. The Pretty first exciting. episode of the UK. And we are joined by no other than Natasha Dowie. How are you? I am great. Nice to see you and to hear some Aussie accents. Aussie accents, <laughs> yep. We, you've played in Melbourne. We'll touch on that. Um the coffee culture there is very good too, and we've got some nice coffee. You gave us all the best places yes. in Liverpool. Liverpool's we put on a not great game too last bad. Night for us to watch last night <laughs> we too, saw the way. Toulouse game last night. How do we all think that went? Do you know what? Very well. Yeah, lots of goals. Look comfortable, and especially saving some of our big hitters as well. So yeah. I think all in all, a good night at Anfield. Yeah, world class bench. <laughs> yes, I know. Saying the words before the game last night. Uh, where's what do you think the score is going to be? He says five one. No, oh, well, yeah. that's yeah. impressive. We I went three nil. Should have got some money on it. Yeah, yeah. I was going three nil. Sunk, and then Salah came on. I'm like, no. Nah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Tash, let's start off with where did your football? Uh, how did your love for football come to be? So my family are big into football. My uncle played professionally yep. for West Ham and Southampton, played for Northern Ireland, and then obviously went into managing in the Premier League. My dad was more semi-pro, but it was a big footballing family. Yep. I was the first of two. Uh, my sister was a bit more of a girly girl. I guess I was the tomboy. Um, so literally as soon as I would popped out of my mum's yeah, tummy, it was like I had a football in my hand. That's yep. all I remember as a kid playing football and you know, back then we didn't have the opportunity to play with the boys. So my dad got me and a couple of my friends and we just used to go and have a kick about in our local town. Fantastic. And kind of there the, the journey started really. Yeah, wow. Fantastic. Um, did you have any footballing idols growing up? Do you know what? I loved, I, I actually used to watch like Thierry Henry, yep. you know, because when I was younger, there wasn't many female kind of idols to look up to. Yep. I was aware of Abby Wambach and her style of play um, as a centre forward for America. Yeah, she was incredible. Big, yep. strong powerhouse. But yeah, it was mainly in the men's game, really, when I was growing up. Yeah, well, what did you like about Thierry Henry? Scored goals. Scored yeah. goals. Yeah, I, I knew I wanted to be a striker. It was something that I enjoyed. I always remember as a kid playing in the back garden with with my football and my goal <laughs> and no keeper and and just basically scoring goals and commentating and yeah. getting the winner all the time. And yeah, <laughs> fantastic. Um, who did you support growing up? Because like like you just said to us before, and it wasn't Liverpool. No, I'm sorry to say that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah wow. but it, do you know what? I think it's probably a good thing. I never really supported a team, so it was really wherever my uncle was. So West Ham. I remember <laughs> there's a video of me as a little kid wearing my West Ham kit and yep. Dowie number nine on the back. And cool. so yeah, I yeah. used to kind of follow him. And then when he was managing Crystal Palace in the Premier League, followed Palace. But then as soon as I moved up to Liverpool and signed for Liverpool, met my partner Becky. It was a no brainer. You know, this was my new home and my and my club. Fantastic. Now let's talk about your professional career. What club did you start at? Um, and how were you identified by scouts? Yeah, so Harpen and Colts was my local town um, where I used to have a kick about. And then I actually then got scouted by Watford mm -hmm. and went through their centre of excellence and then started playing for the first team when I was 15. Yeah, and wow. Yeah, and then that's kind of when I got scouted by England at the under-15s age group. And, and then the journey really started from there. I went to then Fulham um, and then had a, a spell at Charlton. And yeah, the kind of journey goes then and there was 14... 14 more teams. <laughs> yeah, wow. Fantastic. And, and did you always, like you said, you're in the backyard, like scoring the goals, right? Mm -hmm. um, like Thierry Henry. Did you always, fan were you always a striker or did you fancy yourself in a different position no, as you grew up? Always a striker. Yeah. yeah. I, and I think the modern game now, players are a lot more versatile and I feel like players can play like two or three positions. Yep. That wasn't me. You know, I'm an out and out number nine, get yeah. in the box, get on the end of crosses. Yeah. You know, if ever, which was very rarely in my career, if ever the manager, you know, tried to move me out wide or move me in the 10, I, I wasn't having any of it. <laughs> get <laughs> did, me back in the middle. <laughs> did you ever have found yourself like Olivier Giroud the other day, finding yourself having a playing goal or something like that? Did, you, <laughs> did, you, did that ever happen during your career? Do you know what? No, but I always used to say in training, I feel like it'd be really fun, you know, just to have like an 11 v 11 fun game where we can change positions because yeah, I yeah, always yeah. thought it'd be cool to play centre half and to be able to see the whole pitch because yeah. as a striker you never see anything really it's always like players are behind you and you've got to so make it, the runs yeah right? so yeah. it'd be fascinating to see like mm. the whole picture in front of you yeah it must be hugely I guess satisfying for you watching this massive global surge in popularity for a game that you've played and loved but I imagine back when you were 16, 18, you know, starting even in his 20s, you know, you, you just watched all the money going into the men's game, right? Yeah. Um, so tell me, what's it like now as, you, as you're watching this, as say, this global surge, you've just become an ambassador for Liverpool. There's just, you know, the, the, you've, got the, you've got the Women's Super League, you've got, it's just all happening over. What's that like and how do you reflect back to what it was like 
mm-hmm. then. It is crazy to think within the last 10 years, you know, I was playing for Liverpool, you know, almost getting paid per game to play. And now you kind of look at the contracts that are getting thrown around and that's within the 10 years. You yeah. know, we used to have to train at 8 p.m. at night after the under eights boys had finished. Oh, and, wow. you know, it was two or three wow. times. Yeah, two, yeah. I remember at Everton, we were at uh, the training ground and we'd be the last ones to be able to train at, at the training ground. And it was eight o'clock till about 10 o'clock at night. And then I'd have to travel back down to London and I wouldn't, I wouldn't get home till about 1, 2 a.m. in the morning. Wow. You know, and now you see them moving into Melwood, you know. Yeah. Yeah, lunch, exactly. yeah, yeah, breakfast, yeah. lunch, you know, I probably retired at the wrong time. Yeah. But, you know, people always say to me, would you want to play now? You know, start your career now. And actually, it sounds bizarre, but I wouldn't because I feel like I got the best of both worlds. Okay. I think that now there's so much pressure for the female players because of how big the publicity yeah. is and how yeah. much they're like celebrities now. Because you were kind of under the radar a bit, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Whereas I feel like I've had the best where you've had to work and graft and it wasn't easy. But then also the privilege of being a pro football player and being able to have it as my full-time job but it is it's, it's brilliant to see when I see them playing at the Emirates in front of 54,000 yeah, people amazing. first game of the season yeah. you know it's brilliant to see yeah. it really yeah. is and it's kind of scary to think maybe in 10-15 years time just where the game's well, going to be there, you know, the semi-final of the World Cup in Sydney um, just, 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 oh, just, just yeah. unbelievable you know it was just absolutely unbelievable but obviously you had your going back to the start of your career mm-hmm. I think it was if I've got this right it was Watford and yep. it was Fulham and it was Charlton yes um, and then Wiz and I were talking about this, and Having you entered you enter, you enter, you enter, you enter what we call the dark days of your career. When you started playing with the blue side of, uh, of, of Manchester, I'm uh, sorry, of Manchester, I should say, um, with the Toffees. Talk to me about that. Yeah. How did you get through those years? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? It was crazy. So I was at Charlton at the time, and the men's Premier League team got relegated. Yep. So the women's team folded. So I didn't have a team. And it was then, where do I go? Mo Marley was my England manager at the time at under 19s and she was manager of Everton. And then I remember Vic Akers at Arsenal, 15 minutes away from where my family lived in Hertfordshire, had dominated for you know the last 10 yep. years. Yeah. Who would I have picked? Okay, let's go for Everton. You know, a lot of people said, why? You know, yep. four hours up the M1, M6, yep. you know, to play for a team that, you know, was so probably- you were still living in London. I was still living in London, yeah. And I Training made the choice. Here. Yep. And it was just because I never, I always liked to be the underdog. You know, I always wanted to knock Arsenal off their pedestal a little bit. And I thought that if I went to Arsenal, you know, it'd be, it'll be easy. You know, yeah. I wouldn't feel like maybe I'd really achieved anything. So I remember I used to travel, we trained twice a day twice a week and I'd come up um, and to be honest look I know I'm a Liverpool fan but probably my best years playing wise was at Liverpool and Everton yep. you know my most successful years yep. you know I met my partner and now my wife Becky you know so for me it was almost like it was fate won the FA Cup scored the winner in the 118th minute won the League Cup you know narrowly missed out on winning the league at the last game of the season against Arsenal on goal difference with Everton. So, you know, the five years there were incredible. And, you know, and I'm still really proud of those years. Yeah, well, that's what I want to talk about, the FA Cup final against Arsenal. When I was watching the highlights, I was like, oh, my (laughs) goodness. Wow. Two goals in that match. Talk us through that. How did you feel? FA Cup final. First FA Cup final, I I can imagine. It was at Nottingham Forest, yeah, actually. Yeah. 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 There's 30,000. And actually, I played in one before for Charlton, um, but we got beat 4 1 by Arsenal. And I was 18 years old at the time. So this was my second FA Cup final. Redemption. Yeah, redemption. Yeah. 30,000. I remember being so in the zone. I even look back at pictures of me in the, in the kind of warm up and in the huddle. And I was just like, I looked like I was possessed. Focus. Yeah. yeah. And I remember when I scored the first goal and then it was, you know, 1 0, 1 1, 2 1, 2 2. And I remember it going to extra time. And I just thought this cannot go to penalties. You know, as a player, you don't want to win it. Like it's just too nerve wracking. Mm. And I remember Jill Scott goes up, wins the header. Brooke Chaplin gets half turned, slips me in. And at the time I thought she'd slip me too wide. But Emma Byrne comes like out. That, yeah. yeah, she comes out. And then I just remember dinking it over into the far corner, jumping into the crowd, yeah. hug, hugging this boy. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't saw, even think he yeah. was a, a fan, an Everton fan or Arsenal fan, but I was just hugging him. Everyone was going wild. All my family were there. And honestly, that would probably be one of the highlights of my career. I remember wow. we literally, it sounds awful, we didn't even shower. We just whacked on our trackies, got the bus, the coach straight back up to Everton and went out and had the best awesome. night That's out, awesome. partied hard. Amazing. Like, <laughs> the goosebumps of yeah. like hearing the commentary like, Dowie! Yeah. <laughs> so good. Um, when you finished in Everton in 2012, you joined the Mighty Reds. Yes. How did it feel putting on that famous number nine shirt? Oh. 
unreal. You know, it was it wasn't easy living leaving Everton to be honest because I've been there for five years. But when Matt Beard approached me and I'd worked with Beardy at Charlton, he was the assistant when I was there, and he said, "Look, we're going to go full time." It's the first time ever that a women's team in England were going to have a full time program training five times a week. He was talking to me about bringing Americans in, you know, Swedish players, German players. Um, you know, all these Icelandic players and in England, foreign players hadn't really come over yet. So yep. I thought, this sounds so cool. I can't really like miss this opportunity. The first time that I'd get paid properly as well to play. And so I just thought, let's do it. And it it was the best thing I've ever done, you know, yeah. to win the league back to back, you know, with the team. And I, I've look, I've played for 20 years, 25 years, played in 16 different countries, six different, wow. sorry, 16 wow. different teams, sorry, six countries. But those two years at Liverpool were the best by far. Yeah. And you, what a, what a couple of seasons for you <laughs> yeah. too. Like goals, goals, goals. Well, yeah. we're going to pick that in your first stint at 43 goals in 59 games or thereabouts. And, and yeah, there was a, there were some big tournaments going on internationally at that time that you didn't get picked mm. for, um, being the Olympics and the World Cup. Like, was there was it just like you didn't suit the way they wanted to play? Was it the England manager and you just like what? Yeah, because it, it, it comes down to small details, yeah. right? You know, it's either you or somebody else, and they went. It wasn't you, and you must have thought to yourself, as a striker, I can't do anymore. Yeah, I've exactly. scored so many goals. Mm-hmm. Why are you not picking me? Tell me about that. Yeah, no, you're spot on. And I think it's something that people always say to me in my career, you should have played for England more. And look, I think that I've always been a player. When I was younger, it hurt me, of course. But I think the older I've got and the more mature I've got is that actually maybe not playing for England as much has allowed me to travel the world. But at the time, look, when I was golden boot, we had won the league mm. and I'm not getting picked. Go figure. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, it yeah. was tough to take. And look, Hope Power was a manager at the time and she'd been in charge for, I think it was 15 years. And look, let's be honest, my face obviously just didn't fit for her. Um, yeah. I can't really explain any other way. Yeah, you know, people know Did my relationship. Did you get a chance to talk to her about it? No, it not like really. It was quite cutthroat. Yeah, cups. it was literally yeah. like you got an email not selected or email oh. selected and it n- never was really explained to you. And unfortunately, back then, because the women's game wasn't as big, mm. the media wasn't much around it. It'd be like Rachel Daly, for instance, not going to yeah, the World Cup. Yeah, I was going to say, like now you know, it'd be an uproar, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It wouldn't have happened. So <laughs> Harry Kane not getting paid exactly. for England. Yeah. So, so yeah. that was tough to take, but I really see it as I got to travel the world. Yeah. I got to play in Australia and playing in all these different countries. And I made the most of, you know, a bad situation. But I'm proud still that I, you know, I played for England 14 times, scored five goals. It's something that I'm really proud that I've been able to achieve. But yeah, mm. I think I deserved more. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Uh then you joined Australia after yes. Liverpool. Well, didn't join Australia. You went to Australia and played for Melbourne Victory. Our seasons are in the summer. How did you find the heat? And did you get the play with Sam Kerr against? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember when I first got approached about going to Australia. Look, I'm going to be honest. I didn't even know they had a league over there for the women's <laughs> team. And I actually told it. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I thought when they said, look, summer, three or four months, I thought this is a win-win. Like, yeah. let's go. And as soon as I got there, the people were so friendly. I just loved the culture. I'm a big foodie. So the brunches, the coffee, yeah. the... The sun. Yeah, yeah. Melbourne's yeah, just unreal for that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And you wouldn't think that I'm a sun worshipper with my skin, but I love the sun. I remember we'd go for coffee and we'd be sitting outside and pe- everyone would be inside and they'd be going, are you mad? Like sit- <laughs> we'd be sweating, <laughs> but I would just love the feeling of the sun. Yeah. But no, honestly, with regards to that, you know, the heat was tough, you know, because we played on 4G a lot of the time and, you know, that kind of gets really hot and yeah. the kickoffs would be at like 4 p.m. during the day. So my yeah. fitness levels definitely improved playing over there. And with regards to Sam Kerr, look, the thing with me and Sam is we always were fighting for the golden boot. And I think I would have won the golden boot a lot more if she hadn't have been over there. Yeah, there but go. it was always me and her neck and neck. And we had some good battles. I eventually did win the golden boot um, when she actually wasn't in the league. Um, she had left. But no, she's she's a world class player and, you know, someone that I respect very much. And yeah, I love my battles against her. What was your favourite goal at Melbourne Victory? Do you have one? Ooh. I'd actually have to say Brisbane away. Okay. I did like a kind of bicycle kick. That's what yes. I was showing you this morning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like a yeah. sort of like sideways yes. kick, right? That's the one. Crouch sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. love yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, I remember Tegan whipped a ball in yeah. and I've chested it and then kind of like volleyed it. it. That's yeah. probably the best one I scored. No, I just, yeah. I said, to be fair, Wes, when you showed me, I said, it, it, later on we're going to talk about that goal. Yes. And I said it wasn't that goal. Now, I'm not you sure know if you I mean? know yeah. that goal that we're going to talk about, but I want to show you. you can guess which goal you scored, which in our opinion... Oh. It was amazing. Goal. Anyway, let's continue. Ooh. You obviously had a great relationship with Matt Beard. 
you know, yes. um, over the years you've, you've, you've been coached by him in various organisations, mm-hmm. including a short spell in America, in, yes. in Boston. Yep. Um, the Boston Breakers. Yes. Now, obviously, <laughs> you know, the American has, I, I guess if you look at women's, women's football, the, the you know, women, sorry, I, I remember speaking to American friends of mine 20 years ago and they thought soccer was a women's game. Mm-hmm. In their world, soccer, women's game, yep. right? And because it was so huge throughout their university systems and everything. So that was, I think, why the U.S. Had, was so strong internationally yeah. for so long. But but when you got there, um, what was it like? Was it a professional league? Mm-hmm. Was it, what, what was I mean, Boston's another great city, yes. right? I mean, tell yeah. me about your experience in Boston. Do you know what? It was incredible. Challenging, but incredible. So I remember I went over there. It's the first time, except for Australia, playing abroad. Um, you know, a big decision for me to move over there. But luckily my partner, Becky, came with me. And the area that we were staying was really cool. So we trained at Harvard Stadium. So really cool, like, you know, that kind of vibe of university vibe. And Boston, the city itself, was beautiful as well. But I actually really struggled with the ruthlessness and the cutthroatness of how the players were. And look, there's no surprise. That's why they win so much, because it's dog eat dog out there. But I was a little bit more used to that kind of team environment and, I felt like it was so just everyone was quite in it for hot. themselves. Yeah, a little bit. That's the no vibe I got. Ethic, yeah. yeah, and yeah. look, it might have been different at different clubs, but when I was at Boston, I really found that you know it was it was dog eat dog. It was really like, look, I'm coming for your position. Really? So I kind of struggled with that for two years, to be honest. Mm. But look, I played a lot, and I was top goal scorer there for both of the seasons, and I, I made of it the best that I could. It was a really sad ending mm. the way it ended, obviously with the the owners pulling the plug, and yep. then obviously the the club folding and collapsing completely. And I remember. I remember actually being in Australia and Melbourne when I found this out. Yeah. And I remember going into the draft picks and when we were going to find out what clubs we were going to. Go, go, and I yeah. didn't get selected. What? And I remember it's because ridiculous. of my yeah, and I remember it's because of my contract, basically, because I was an international, my contract was maybe a bit higher than others. So gotcha. clubs couldn't afford to basically sign me up. And I remember crying in my apartment in Australia, the other side of the world knowing that I didn't have a club to play for. You know, there was only a couple of weeks till the season started. And I was thinking, what am I going to do? And I guess then that's when I moved to Sweden. There you go. Interesting. I want to talk about that season in the W League when you won the Premiership. Yeah. Talk me through about that season Mm. and how you went as a player and how the the, the team chemistry was. Yeah. You know what? It was brilliant, the journey that I had at Melbourne Victory, because I remember when I first went over there, they, I think they had dominated a lot over the years, but then they lost a lot of players to Melbourne City because mm-hmm. they had the money, the backing of Man City. Boy, City. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I remember Jeff Hopkins came in and he basically just changed everything. You know, the first couple of years, I remember we were slowly moving up the table, improving, getting better players in. Then we came so close and I think we made semi-finals, but got beat. And then the year that we won the Premier League, you know, the squad that we had, you know, we had such a togetherness. Who was in that? Like, who oh, was so, you know, Christine Nahn, you know, the Americans so good, you know, Emily Gilnick. Um, who else did we have? We had, oh, the likes of... You have a very big, young Kyra Cooney <laughs> yes, in that team. 15 years yeah, old. Yeah, she was 15. Yeah, right? yeah and yeah, I remember, yeah. I remember Kyra, exactly that. And, you know, we didn't have the best players. You know, when you looked in the likes of City and some of the other teams, Perth were pushing us with Sam Kerr, but we just had this togetherness that we had each other's backs. Um, and th- you're spot on with, well, that's what I love to see, the likes of Angie Beard, you know, playing in the World Cup for the Philippines. Kyra now, who was a 15-year-old kid now, yeah a regular starter Super for the national star. team at Arsenal. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just brilliant to see, like, these players yeah. developing. It was awesome watching Ian Wright. I, I love Ian yes. Wright. I love Ian Wright. I, I, you, you probably know, but I, love, I just love the – he just so seems to be so authentic and real, yeah. you know, and he was down there and he was making a big splash with the commentary and things during the Women's World Cup in Australia and he was clearly enjoying mm-hmm. himself. And then he would tweet, like, during the games and he just said, this girl – and apparently it was a little bit influential in getting into Arsenal. You know, yeah. Because he goes, there's something about this. Yeah. And something Cutley. about this girl. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. But no, honestly, when we won the Premier League, it was just phenomenal. But do you know the thing that I always find a bit strange over in Australia? And it's kind of that American mentality is that actually the Premier League doesn't seem to be as big as winning like the knockoff championship game because yeah. then we got beat in the semi final and we didn't make the final. And I feel like they make a bigger thing of that. But and I'm it, like, it's, consistently, we, yeah. we won the season. There's an American, it's a really weird thing because like I was I'm, was born in the UK and, and moved to Australia um, via a couple of countries but got there when I was sort of in my 20s mm-hmm. and 
I'm like, so you win the league, but you don't win the league. Yeah. <laughs> then you're yeah. going to go and start a whole new league. Exactly. Where, you know, and, yeah. and it's good, the grand final, you're right. In any sport down there, they all have this system where the grand final winner yeah. is just determined yeah. from anyone in the top I four know. or six or eight. Or, you know, it's yeah. kind of so crazy. That's probably the one thing I wish I'd gone and won, but, you know. So you're not a fan of the final series no, format? No, I think consistency. I. That's just a one-off game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I get that. Um, so we're, we're going to move countries again now. Okay. Um, so we were chatting about it on the plane on the way over here, and we can only think of three players who later in their career went to AC to finish off, right? And we got Zlatan Ibrahimovic, David Beckham, and Natasha Dowie. Not too bad right. company. And so it's a hell of a, <laughs> hell of a trio there um, that went late in their game. And, and, you know, what was the Italian football landscape? Because mm. obviously the, I'm interested in – because the men's Serie A game, you know, I used to watch a lot of it growing up, and it was very – a very so slow, defensive minded, and yep. consi- it was more of an international style of game yep. to watch than mm-hmm. something like the Premier League, which yes. is sort of more rip shit and bust, you know. Hundred percent. So, did you find it more tactical? Was it slower? As a, as a, as you said, as a traditional number nine, how did yep. you adapt to that? Yeah, you're spot on. I think. You know, I had to, I was meant to sign a two year contract at Milan, and unfortunately, it was COVID, which was gutting yeah. because the fans weren't allowed in the stadiums, and we had such a big following. You know, and the the fans over there are really you know football mad. Full on. Yeah. Um, and when I went to Milan, look, the lifestyle was incredible. Going to Lake Como of a weekend, but the football wow. style, you're spot on. I think a lot of, let's say theatrical behaviour, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and that's something that I'm just they not used to. Stuff, yeah, yeah, they do. And I, even with some of my teammates, I used to say, get up. Like, yeah. it's embarrassing. <laughs> but like... But they have TV shows yeah. <laughs> showing yeah. the best theatrics from the world. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And like, the, the, the thing that I really struggled with was the language barrier. So I'm a big character. I'm a big personality. I like to be like a voice heard in the changing room. And look, I struggled with the Italian. You know, I, we got lessons, but I really found it hard to pick up. They didn't sp- speak amazing English the manager spoke zero English so we had to have a teammate translate everything so that was probably the thing that I struggled with the most Um, but look we made history you know we made uh, Champions League for the first time ever second in the league behind Juventus you know unfortunately now they're kind of Drop down a little bit, but no, it's probably one of the proudest moments to wear that number ten shirt for AC Milan. Mm-hmm. You know, and number 10 oh, for Milan. unreal, oh, honestly. My God, my. That's just yeah, yeah. Sorry. and scored two in the derby. Too, exactly, you know. yeah, no, and the fans even now still message me and say that I'm still like a hero and legend over there. So it's nice that I had such an impact within like there a short one period. Shirt, like of all the, you know, like you've it got is. somewhere special. Yes. Yeah, yeah, no, that Milan shirt. When I look at it, it's just it's classy. Yeah. You know, typical Italian, just stylish. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and then obviously you come back to, to back to English football, mm-hmm. which has now become the WSL. Yes, yeah, um, which is a whole different thing now mm-hmm. because we're talking about a professional league. We're talking yep. about you know training full you know, a very different league than what you started in. Um, how I guess coming back late in your career, then obviously back to Liverpool was it? It was yeah. Reading actually, Reading. Yeah. Reading. yeah, and then on on into yep. Liverpool yep. for that um, sort of big final year, but or well, a couple of years, but. Talk to me about like the. You must have come back in thinking, my goodness, this is so different now from what I yep. what I started. Like, yep. well, you, know, you said you were training previously. You were only training twice a week. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming now it's like yep. every day. Every and, day. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. I, I remember when I decided to leave Milan, and it was mainly because of COVID, and I just missed family, and it was hard for my partner Becky because she was just stuck in an apartment. So I thought, yeah. let's go back home. And you know what? It was so <clears throat> nerve wracking because when I'd left England. Not to be big headed, but I I was a bit of a star. You know, yeah. I'd won the league. I was golden boot. So there was a lot of pressure for me to come back, and I wanted to show everyone how I developed over the last seven years as a player, as a person. Um, and look, I'm not going to lie, I found it tough because look, I was 30, maybe two, 33. So none of the big teams really probably wanted to sign someone of that age. Mm-hmm. So I signed for Reading, and that's no disrespect for Reading, but they were a mid-table team, yes. and as a centre forward. <clears throat> I was used to scoring goals. I was used to getting opportunities. I was used to competing. I found it so frustrating. You know, I'd be getting maybe one opportunity a game, not touching the ball. I wasn't involved. And that was probably mentally, physically everything, the hardest year and a half of my career. I really wasn't happy, you know, and I wasn't enjoying my football. And it's probably the first time in my career that, you know, I didn't get excited to go to training. And that's when I thought I have to make the decision right now because I don't want to end my career like this. And that's when I spoke to my agent. I spoke to the manager at Reading and said, look, I'm not happy. Like, let's kind of come to an agreement. Maybe I can leave in the January transfer window. You're not getting the best out of me. I'm not getting the best out of you. And luckily, 
they let me go and I spoke to Beardy and that's when I got the loan move to Liverpool and back it was in. the best. Back in. The back best. In. Um, I'll talk about the goal. Yeah. All right. Okay. In our opinion. Okay. Go on. Stevie G has a goal. Sam Kerr has a goal. Chloe Kelly has a goal. Okay. And we think this is your goal. Okay. You chip the keeper from about 40 yards out. Oh. Do you remember that goal? Is this for Reading? Yes. Yes, yes left foot. I can show yeah. you the yes. video if you no, want. No, I remember, I remember every goal. Yards out. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it was Not nice. Not far off what Beckham did in his first game. Did you, know? you know, yeah. Did you see the keeper off the line or was this just instinctive? No, do you know what? I saw all week we've been practising and to be fair to our manager, they said the keeper is always off her line. So all week in training, we were working on lobs, but mainly with my right foot because mm-hmm. my left foot isn't as strong as my right. So I hadn't been doing any lobs with my left foot. But I just remember at the time, I took a touch and I saw her off her line. And look, if you had asked me to do that again, my left foot, I'm not too sure where it would have gone, but I just seemed to hit it cleanly, yep. you know, and that's probably, yeah, yeah one of the just, best finishes. It just looked like, you know, it was like nice. I stood back and watched it going in like that. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I've actually got another, the goal okay, for you. Okay, go on. Against Sunderland. Oh, yes. When you were wearing the white Liverpool yes. shirt in 2015. I think you got goal of the year. Yes. Goal of the season. Little yeah. dink again. Yeah, little dink again. Was that with the right foot? That was with the right foot so this right time. And left. Yeah. I love that you still remember which oh, foot it was. Every yeah. goal I remember. As a striker, I think you're guilty of doing that. Yeah. But then coming back to Liverpool, um, you know, like you think about players that have, like, you know, you had your first amazing time with them. You scored a lot of goals. What's it like coming back the second time? Mm. There must be a feeling of, I've got this. I, I know this. This is comfortable. I'm going to do really, you know, you. I imagine it doesn't come with the nerves of being there the first time. You're at a late stage in your career. There's, did you feel Do you like... Do you know what? It's so funny you, you say like that? that. The complete opposite. Really? Wow. It's crazy. I so remember... You felt nervous. I felt so nervous. but And it's crazy because I was 30, what, 34... But I think it was because I just cared so much. And at the time when I came back, they were in the relegation zone. And it was like, I knew I only had six months and potentially I didn't know then what was going to happen, whether I was going to get a contract or what was next for me. So even though I was excited to be back, I I wanted to help them so much, almost too much. I Mm. think that the nerves got the better of me. And I remember my first couple of games back, I just was trying too hard, you know, and Beardy actually sat me down and he went, Tash, like, relax. relax like, yeah. you you score goals, mm. you've been playing football all your life, like, just be you. Like, we know what you're good at. And actually then I started to relax and obviously City, I scored my two goals against City Villa. and Villa, got yeah. obviously the, the record for WSL goals, 20 goals, and, and, and helped the team, you know, get safety comfortably. Um, and to hear the fans again singing my song, you know, it was... I think it was the perfect way to end my football career. Fantastic. Now you're Liverpool ambassador, uh, joining other legends like Ian Rush and Kenny Dalglish. How does it feel um, doing this and what does it entail? You know what? Every day I have to pinch myself and I don't think I'll ever really understand this role. You know, I wake up and I'm like, as if I'm Liverpool football club's ambassador Mm. it just doesn't seem real Um, and I think this kind of last couple of months has all been a bit of a whirlwind for me with my guard of honour at Anfield yeah we saw that that was 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 amazing it's like honestly it's like it was nearly if not as good as my wedding day (laughs) my partner wasn't very happy when I said that (laughs) yeah if they'd done that for me that would have been about my wedding (laughs) apologies Kim but Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah but no I think for me now I'm just so passionate about you know the impact that I can have being the first female you know breaking down walls working with the foundation really helping the women's game grow even more I'm working at the academy now mentoring the under 18 boys Boys, first female again within the men's kind of set up there so that's another barrier broken you know working for LFC TV I'm big I'm passionate about my media work so that's been great to be able to get to the games and do the co-coms but I'm just wanting to get involved in everything next month I'm going to South Africa for five days to go to the schools and and to give back so I feel like that's going to be really rewarding as well but I just want to get get going you know as a football player you always have that kind of desire you know that kind of purpose that goal that you're kind of achieving come a Sunday game so now it's kind of a different role for me you know what's my purpose and but I'm still going to be as passionate you know in this role exactly yeah there you go a couple of quick fires. Okay. Do to do, how do you want to do oh, this? Oh, God, do you I'm want nervous. Me to go, you, you do you want me to do one? Then you do yeah, one? Yeah, this is a we'll share. Okay. Oh, the most just for, t- then, just, just, there's no wrong answer. It's whatever, okay. you know, whatever you, yeah. Okay, just quick fires, whatever. Okay. No pressure. Okay. The most talented player you've played with? Raw talent. Ooh, I'm going to have to go Farrah Williams. Yeah. Farrah yeah. Williams. Fair. Yes. Yeah. Fair. Left foot, right foot, did things that no one else could do. Yeah, there you go. As a striker... Um, who was your favourite player 
to play with in terms of providing assists? Oh, Christine Nahn. Yeah. yeah, American. I knew that as soon as she got the ball, I could just make my run and the ball would be at my yeah. feet. Yeah. So good. Which was your favourite manager to play under? Oh, this is tough. Oh, I'm going to have to give you one, aren't I? I'm going to have to say Jeff Hopkins okay. just because he was like a father figure, you know, and he's just really good, good people person. And is there anyone you would like to, have, as a manager or a player, uh, played under or with mm. that you didn't Serena get Serena Wiegmann. Yeah. I yeah. just think the way that she has transformed <clears throat> this England team now is phenomenal. And I think yeah. she, she plays players for their form and for how they're performing. I think step aside, it's time to step aside Gareth and it's time to put Serena in charge. Yes. My, I'd love to. Right. Right. Maybe Klopp. Would, yeah. Maybe Klopp. Yeah. 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 Play that. under yeah. Jürgen. Yeah. The press. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, Salah, Mane, Dowie. Oh, um. yes. <laughs> uh, I'm going to skip through. Uh, actually, no, I'm not. All-time five-a-side team. Okay. Does Sam Kerr make that? No, because I'm in. <laughs> yeah, fair, yeah. enough. fair yeah. enough. We've got Rachel Brown in goal. I'm going to have Becky Easter, my partner, as my defender because she'll just smash everyone, so I love that. Christine Nahn in midfield. Rose Lavelle just behind me, and then I'm the forward. So that's my five-a-side. There you go. So the um, talk about some young talents coming through now. Yeah. We start obviously the World Cup brought mm-hmm. a few like to bear like you know performance, amazing performances from like Mary Fowler from the Matilda. Yes. She really, you know, she's grown and at the foot after the World Cup now mm-hmm. starting regularly for City. You know, Linda Casado. Yeah. Um, you know, who are some of the other young talents you see in the game now that you think she's special? Yeah, I think Kyra has got to be there. Kyra yeah. Kroonin Cross. I think. I actually would like to see her playing more for Arsenal. Yep. I don't know whether they're just slowly bedding her in, her but in. I'm yep. surprised she hasn't played more already. But I just think I could see something special when she was 15, but I think she's matured massively over the last couple yep. of years. Um, so definitely Kyra. Um, and then who else would I say? No, she'd probably be the main one for me. Yep. Yeah, yeah. 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 watch this space for her. Um, thoughts on Missy Bo Do you know what? Missy's a talent, you know, and I think the thing with Missy is that because she's the scouser in the team, there's a lot of pressure on her, a lot yeah. of media publicity. And I feel like I just want them to make sure they don't put too much pressure on her too early. Probably the same with Trent and some others, right? Exactly. Where they just get picked on because yes. they're like, you should be special because you're local. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. But no, look, she had a good first season in the WSL last year, <laughs> scored some important goals. You know, so for me, it's just, look, keep your, keep humble, keep grounded. She's someone that works hard, so I'm sure she'll do very well. There you go. All Last right. question. Last question for this one. Just men's, women's, whatever. Greatest ever Liverpool player. Oh, I love Luis Suarez. Oof. Yeah. Oof. I know it's a bit controversial, but. Oh, no, it's not. It's not. Uh, I mean, it's, I know it's everything to love yeah, about him. Yeah, it? it is. Yeah. Everything I just, to love I just about loved him. his rawness and like how he did it. He's just brilliant. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I'm not sure if, will we have time to do a couple of soccer bollocks yes. questions? Oh, yeah, let's do it. Let, of course we've got time. That's just my opinion on Suarez, by the way. You've probably got bigger greats like Gerard. And, but so, I just, but he excited favorite, me. Right? He excited yeah. me so much. Yeah. Are we ready? Yes. Here we soccer, go. It's called soccer bollocks. Turning, so, <laughs> uh, talking soccer bollocks quiz. Okay. Your first goal for England was in a 6-0 win against Belarus. Yes. What stadium were you at? Bournemouth. Yeah. yeah. Oh, here we go. Do you know what? The only reason I know that is because Nottingham Forest versus Luton the other day, the reporter actually told me that. So thank you. There you go. Yeah. You won goal of the year in 2015 in a 2-2 draw. Who was it against? Sunderland. Yeah. Oh, I am yes. Here we go. Uh, Tegan Micah has just signed for Liverpool. She's the current number two in the Matildas squad. Uh, what club uh, does the number one keeper for the Matildas play for? West Ham. Yes. Oh, my God, this is just... And she's captained. Drop the mic. Now, um, in your dark days playing for Everton, our opinion, our opinion. <laughs> dark days. Um, which, uh, which, and there's only one Aussie playing for the Toffees right now. Who is it? Uh, so for the men, oh, for the women. Yeah. yeah. Um, Wheeler. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, my God, this is so good. In the last 12 months, who had the fastest record shot in global football? Strike of the ball, fastest, most power. The ball speed. Kelly. Yes. yes. Penalty. Well, like, Here we go. This is six from six. <laughs> um, what number does Harvey Elliott wear for Liverpool? Oh. Everyone gets this one wrong, FYI. Connor, you watched him last night. Why? I don't know why I'm thinking 45. Oh. It's 19. I'm is so it? sorry. Oh, yeah. Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who has the most headed Premier League goals in history? Oh, it's got to be Alan Shearer. It's Peter Crouch, but Alan is Shearer's it? second. Ooh, yeah, okay. everybody says Shearer. Yeah. Um, 
Who was the young player who got the red card for England in the last Women's World Cup? Uh, oh, yes, Lauren James. Yes. yes. I think that's six out of eight. That's, that's not bad, fantastic. is it? Fantastic. Okay. You killed so him. That's the bounty. I think I got three. Exactly. Look, look that's at my competitiveness. Is that the You're on the leaderboard. I think that's the best ever. I think it's the best ever. You're on the yes. podium. Yes. There you go. I love it. <laughs> you think like, you know, like you've had this by any standard hugely successful football mm-hmm. career, right? But now you're entering this next phase of your life. Yeah. Which is, you know, you know it's going to it's going to have different things, mm-hmm. you know, around it. Like, so if you think about like success, you know, if I asked you what success was like 10 years ago, you'd say scoring goals. And, yes. You know, Probably, but what does success mean for you in this next phase? I love that question. I think for me, I'd like to think that I've left a legacy footballing-wise um, and now it's about leaving a legacy in this role as an ambassador. So I really want to have an impact in, I want to see more girls getting the opportunity and boys, but probably my, yes. my passion is more girls. Of course. Make it, because it's still not easy enough to play football. Mm-hmm. I want to see, I really want to help grassroots football because I think that so much money is pumped into the top two leagues and the Lionesses, but I still think there's a massive gap between that and the grassroots. Yep. So I want to make sure that that still continues. Um, you know, and just... For me, it's just about every day trying to make people's days better. You know, whether it's going into the lounges and meeting new faces, meeting new people, you know, just really trying to be a good person, you know, as much as I possibly can. Yeah, Um, that's fantastic. Thank you so much for joining Inside Rights UK Tour today. (laughs) Look, I think your career has been exceptional. A powerhouse number nine, Liverpool legend and Everton. Um, (laughs) Thank you so much for joining Inside Rights UK Tour. To remind you of Melbourne Victory, <gasps> some Tim Tams. Yes, I love Tim Tams. And for you to remember, inside right, here's the shirt Thank as you. Well. Oh, this isn't going to be good for my waistline, but, you know, this <laughs> brings coffee. out good yeah. memories. Yeah. You can't eat them one at a time, Tim can you? a cup of tea. Yeah, oh, exactly. Brilliant. Thank, Thank you, you so guys. so much, Natasha Dowie. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Awesome.